So this is Seismic Web. It's uh, Seismic is a, an application. Uh, it's a company that is doing applications around Twitter. Yeah. Uh, they have a great client. And uh, Facebook. And, and Facebook, you're right. Yeah. And FriendFeed as well. Well, he's not doing yeah. so much with FriendFeed because yeah. FriendFeed got bought by Facebook. Yeah. But uh, yeah, Facebook and Twitter. <laughs> so so they had a, a great uh, Adobe Air based desktop client. Yeah. And uh, last summer, they released this super version that's uh, very sleek uh, web version. It's called Seismic Web. And it's built using a uh, Google Web Toolkit. And you can see here, like you have things like um, autocomplete. Yeah, maybe it's a little bit uh, slow here. So here, I'm going to say I love HTML5. That's useful for the next demo. Yep. <laughs> that's using Twitter as well. Uh, and I can uh, so when I log on to Seismic Web, I can find all my um, all my columns. I have some search terms for App Engine, an Open Web, and HTML5. All the terms that I follow. Yeah. What parts of this were built with the toolkit? The whole UI, the user interface is all built using Google Web Toolkit. And if I looked at the code, what kinds of things do I need as a developer who's coming into this new? If I want to build a UI like this, what do yep. I need to know to build these? Uh, these panes, what, what, yeah. what's the code that I need to worry about? Uh, so what the code looks like, uh, it, it's Java code. So you're building, uh, you're building some panels, and then uh, you're using some layouts uh, that come with Google Web Toolkit. And then it's like building a, a swing app for a Java developer. So you have event listeners and all that. Uh, and then you make some calls to your backend to get the data in an asynchronous way. Okay. And Google Web Toolkit provides you with a lot of optimizations about how to do that on the server side. Uh, a great example of optimization is, for example, image writing. Yeah. Uh, so in a typical Web Tool app, you have like a hundred of images in there. Yes. And uh, what, what one technique to, uh, to make uh, a smaller uh, bandwidth calls uh, is to gather all these images into one, yep. and then using CSS tricks in order to reposition them to the right place. Google Web Toolkit does that for you, so you don't have to, uh, uh, so you, to build all that. Into you bring it. one image down with all the little icons, yeah. and then you just sprite it around? Exactly. So that's a very, right. that's a very common technique uh, for web optimization. Steve Souders from Google has been writing a lot about these kind of techniques. The thing is to build that by yourself, uh, you have to build a compiler that takes all your JavaScript and images and, and just uh, uh, does that uh, for you. And it's a lot of work. With Google Web Toolkit, you just say, oh, I'm just going to create an image bundle. Here are the images I'm going to use. And then you just use them in the UI. And Google Web Toolkit generates the code to do that. Very cool. So this idea of generating code is, uh, is pretty powerful. Very cool. What, what other kinds of things are you seeing either uh, GWT being used for or HTML5? Uh, what other kinds of apps do you have to show us? So other type. So here, uh, another nice thing you see this loading ah. here. You see, this is typical of uh, like web tool apps where you use AJAX and you refresh automatically. Yep. The experience is very, very sleek. Do you get that automatically, or did you have to code that? Oh, you, you have to code a little bit of that, but Google Web Toolkit gives you lots of uh, things that make it easy to create these kind of apps. Okay. I think Johan, the uh, um, Seismic CTO, built it in a few weeks. Okay. Um, Are there any uh, tricks that you that um, developers who are using GWT need to know, particularly when doing that kind of thing? Yeah, there's a whole bunch of tricks. Uh, we gave uh, at Google I.O., yeah. uh, the GWT team gave lots of excellent talks uh, going into advanced GWT use. Okay. Uh, and, especially and those are all online? They're all online. The videos, the presentation, and plus some code sample are online. And I, I really highly recommend you to uh, just, if you're interested in building this kind of app with GWT, just go look at the tech talks. It's, okay. it's really worth it. Cool. Um, so this is another type of application. So this one is not built with GWT. It's just uh, an HTML5 application. Let me put the sound on. Yeah. And I'm going this to was playing remote. behind us during our interview. Yeah. So this one is one of my favorite demos because he's using everything. So the, the audio tag, so you can hear some music playing in the mm. background if, if I have enough bandwidth. Yeah. And then when I move my mouse here, you can see all these are playing together. Yeah, you can sort of hear the music. So it follows 
the so all the rounds, uh, all, all these little bubbles are drawn using canvas. So canvas is this 2D API. Yeah. And I think it uses my mouse movement plus the music to move the the the, the, the bubbles. And then what the bubbles represent is um, yeah. What the, the bubble represent they are they are tied to uh, a, tw a Twitter search. So they're using the Twitter search API and they are searching for love HTML5. Yep, that's cool. We understand how that works. Yep. So these little bubbles. What's drawing those? What's the code that's drawing those? So the code that's drawing those is that they're they're creating a canvas tag in there. So yep. just a tag, and then they say in JavaScript, give me the context for this tag, and then uh, draw a, a round circle with this color. Uh, you could use now gradients. Is the, is the color being drawn by CSS, or is that color actually being drawn by the HTML5 code? No, it's the HTML5 code. Okay. And so there's some great Canvas tutorial on the Mozilla website that explains how to get started with these. It's very easy. It's so easy that I started to teach my kid uh, JavaScript and HTML5 uh, because he wants to build video games. Yeah. And that's our project for this year. That we build a video game together using that. Very cool. Um, Any other apps that you have that are using HTML5 in some interesting way? Uh, definitely, we have a bunch of samples. My favorite demos are from Paul Rouget. He's a French guy working for Mozilla. Okay. And his demos are awesome. So this one is very impressive. What he's doing in there, he's using everything. So he's using the video tag yeah. uh, to play this video. Let me see if I have a... Um, It'll probably take a little while to enough, uh, bandwidth. Let me maybe reload. So he, he has a, the video tag that plays this video controlled by JavaScript. Then he has some worker threads that while the video is playing, take each frame of the video, put them in a canvas, and then analyze two consecutive frames. And then he has some client-side algorithms in JavaScript that detect contour. Okay. of what's moving. And so I like this one because it's using Canvas, video, and workers uh, uh, in the same demo to do something that wasn't possible. Look at these frames. Oh, I see. So he's, he's looking at the movement. Two consecutive images, and, and then, then he sees what's moving, and then he draws a contour around this. Okay. Like, would you believe, like, even two years ago that that kind of stuff was possible? Uh, this so one that's amazes all being, me. all that processing is being it's done all on the client side. It's all on the browser. Yeah. Wow. Throw a video at me and uh, and uh, so recently he did some demos with a face recognition. Yeah. Uh, one of my favorites as well. It's still Paul Rouget. Uh, so this one is a green screen effect done on the client side. Yeah. And uh, so this is Tristan. He's the Mozilla evangelist. He's speaking on a, on a, on a green screen. Green screen. Yeah. And then what you see here is that uh, is generated by JavaScript in a canvas. And this is being done on the client. Okay. So let me show you the code because that's the most impressive part of that demo. Okay. So look at that. This is just uh, like ten lines of code. So there's one video tag. Let me make it bigger. There's one video tag here, and then two canvas, and all the code is in main.js here. So yeah. like 10 lines of code. And what's nice is this. The JS that's the code. That's the code. It's like one really page simple. of code. And this is just boilerplate code to say, oh, this is how I name my elements and all that. The whole code is there at the bottom, the compute frame function, yeah. and the algorithm is there. It's like I iterate on the pixels. I, I look at the one that are green. And I make them transparent, and then I, I just dump that into another canvas with a different background. <laughs> so when I saw that the first time, I said, OK, that's, that's powerful. This is really a, a very powerful platform. And you don't need a plug-in. You just play it right in the browser. Yeah, right in the browser. Actually, when I saw that example, it compelled me to start playing with it. And uh, I added other filters to it. Yeah. Uh, so here, uh, I let you select uh, Sharpen or Mosaic. And I did that into an evening. I just yeah. looked at his code. I added other filters to it. And and it's very easy to uh, pasteurize. Yeah, pasteurize. You, you add whatever effects you want. That's cool. And that's all being done client side. Yep. Next. It's just as an afternoon of, uh, of coding. Uh, he did some other demos with a, a video. Oh, oh, OK, this one is pretty impressive. That's uh, It's a Japanese team who did that. 
So Canvas allows you to draw 2D vector graphics. Yeah. Okay? When you have 2D, you can draw triangles, and you can do whatever texture you want on the triangles. So when I tell you triangles and texture, what do you think about? Video game, 3D mapping. 3D? Yeah. So this is 3D wow. generated in Canvas in real time. So that, that kind of demo shows how powerful the JavaScript engine has become. He's just moving that where there's a picture uh, on top wow. of this class, and this is all this is all done on the client side in JavaScript. It's a 3D rendering engine using Canvas in JavaScript. Wow. So this one, I consider it more like a game to, to, to show what's possible. Yeah. Uh, there's also some specs that are in, in the works to build uh, real-time acceler hardware-accelerated uh, 3D in the browser. Yes. So Google has a proposal for all 3D, and there's a WebKit 3GL as well. But, but that kind of demos the power of what you can do when you have a... All right, we're almost out of time on the card, oh, okay. so we have one minute left. Okay, so yeah. let's... Um, geolocation is a great one. That's a spec from W3C. It's implemented in the oh. browser. All right, geolocation. Geolocation, I just went to this app. It asked, the browser asked me, do you want to share lo your location with that app? Here we go, we're here. Yeah, that's pretty accurate. So, so geolocation is implemented in the browsers now, and there's a very simple JavaScript API to call for the location. You say, uh, I think it's navigator, the get geo, or something like that. Very cool. Uh, and then... Um, one more. One more. So this one is uh, more a social app, uh, but it's an example of all these things coming together and used by big brands. So that's uh, time.com showed that uh, at our Google I.O. conference last year. Yep. It's a very simple app that they had these lists, like top 10 lists. Yep. And, uh, and now um, they added this where now their users can log into their uh, Google, Yahoo, this is your uh, account, and this is using a, a social offering by Google called Google Friend Connect. Yes. And so once I'm logged in, I can start reordering the list, creating my own list. And then when I'm done, I save it and I share it with my friends. Now, that doesn't sound like very sexy and all that. What's really sexy behind that is that we coded that in, um, we coded that in a few weeks. Okay. And uh, Time didn't have any servers to provision. It's all coded on Google App Engine. Okay. And it's, using, uh, it's on a different domain and it's using JavaScript. So all that you see here is generated using JavaScript in a static page that Time is serving. Wow. So now I have my personalized page on time.com uh, and all the data is in Google App Engine and it's using uh, JavaScript and social APIs for that. Very cool. So, well, thank you so much yeah. for uh, giving me a little tour around uh, Thanks very some much, of the cool Robert. stuff we can do with Bleeding Edge APIs. It will be a cool year. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks.